Okay, let's start. The first thing you need to do, you need to configure your LDAP servers. For that, let's go to device, server profiles, LDAP. And here we will specify our AD servers. Let's say so one ad one dot test dot lab port. If you use LDAP, use default one three eight nine. Uh, if you use LDAP S, which is more preferable, use six three six. That is a secured connection, encrypted. So the second one, SRV2, ad2.test.lab, and also port 636. Now, next step, configure device uh, server type. It's an Active Directory in our case, uh, base DN. That information you should get from your sysadmin. So, but uh, in our case, let's use this one. So, ad1, comma, dc, just ad, comma, dc, comma, uh, sorry, test, comma, dc, equal lab. Just don't know, just here it's. Just from here, test lab. I think, yeah, this let's uh, not use admin for the example because uh, the user which will have access to LDAP can be administrator, but for the security purpose, it's not a good idea to do. Uh, I would recommend you to create another one account which will have a limited access. So, so let's say only LDAP access to the system. And let's do this way. So LDAP, let's say PA LDAP at test.lab password. Just for simplicity. Okay. Configured. Okay, when we configured LDAP servers, the next step we need to do is to, we need to configure authentication profile. So let's say AD users, and here we choose LDAP type, and as a server profile, we use server profile which we have created and go to tab advanced and specify all there's nothing else to see here okay done next step you need to go to your security zones and on the zone from from which users coming from, you need to enable user identification so that has to be enabled on all interfaces, like all user-facing interfaces. Okay, done. Next step, you need to install user ID agent. You can get this agent uh, from paloaltonetworks.com. Uh, Pretty simple installation process. Uh, the only thing you need to do after installation is just to do auto discovery or just to specify your Active Directory service there. And then uh, you will need to check that under monitoring that uh, there is a mapping between user and IP address. Also, keep in mind that Communication between Palo Alto Firewall Management Interface and the server is happening on port TCP 5007. And this has to be configured or uh, um, on the firewall over user identification. And of course, this traffic should be allowed, not blocked anywhere. So let's say UA1 host. 
pd1 dot ah by the way by the way it is not recommended to install user id agent on the domain controllers you can install it on any server including the main controllers but because the main controller is really a critical element which and you might need to restart it which is not always possible so it's not recommended to install user id agent on a sep on a those dedicated servers use another server which is not that critical let's say just something that is not that critical for you but also it's possible to use on domain controllers okay so test.lab port by default is 5007 I recommend to use uh, in, for NTL authentication as well okay next step go to here so UA2 ad2.test.lab also 5007 so it's better to have a redundancy so you will not have only one server and just imagine that all your policy will um, not be working just because uh, something happened with your your single uh, user ID agent. So I really not recommend that. So have always have redundancy. Okay. So when you have configured uh, user identification agent uh, and it's installed there and you have can. Uh, and port 5, 000, TCP 5007 is allowed. So the next step, what you will need to do, you need to press commit, and these circles should become green. If they are not green, if they are red, that means that there is a communication issue. Maybe there is a personal firewall installed, host intrusion prevention system, or anything else. Please check that and allow it access. Um, and then you will see that it, they will turn green. Uh, if you do not see under monitoring tab on the user agent on that server that there is no user to IP mapping, check if the user under which uh, per name that service is running has access to the um, log files on the server so I would suggest that it's better to use um, administrator account for that but uh, if it's not possible you will have to uh, tune it uh, with your sysadmin okay that's done <sighs> press commit and uh, this part is done so you will see that um, user agent is working so next step you will need to do you uh, is to go to policies and create a policy and let's say test ua from source any destination um so it's from interest any yeah let's allow that loose rule and here we're going to tab user and when we press in add uh, you should see the list of all your active directory groups not here because uh, for reason that for security reasons I cannot do that on the actual system so here but here you will see in your case all the different uh, user groups so let's say you'll be able to configure the rule that allows traffic for test slash users and that's all press commit again oh, sorry let's put it on top okay press commit and the traffic will hit this rule. In description, I put some troubleshooting tips and comments 
on what you need to do to verify if user agent is really working for you and the firewall can see um, user to IP mapping. Thank you. That's all. If you have any question, let me know. And uh, I didn't ask you before, but please uh, mark if you like it and ask more questions, uh, put comments uh, just to tell to everyone that this channel uh, you like this channel and it's really important for you thank you for your help thank you for your ideas and all the best with palo alto